So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, biosolids regulations. Now, solids that are removed or are produced as part of the wastewater treatment processes, which are basically the solids that are removed from the primary and secondary treatment, these solids are stabilized using a process such as digestion. And the solids that are removed are subject to regulations established under the 40 CFR part 503. And so this is basically the federal regulation under which the solids are regulated. And generally the biosolids are the stabilized solids which meet the regulatory requirements. And the fundamental reason why these regulations were established in the first place was to protect the public health. Now, in order to understand the biosolids regulations, so first thing that needs to be done is as to who does this uh, regulations apply to. So 503 regs apply to anybody who applies biosolids to the land or burns it in an incinerator or does some sort of a surface application. Generally what happens is most of the biosolids that are disposed are typically used for a land application and in a land application these biosolids are used for typically for, as a fertilizer or it is basically used to augment the soil. In this case, there are specific requirements that are established under these 40 CFR Part 503 regulations. And specifically for the land application of biosolids, there are three major uh, areas that need to be met. So the first is the pollution concentration standard. So under the pollution concentration standards, the biosolids that are produced need to have a minimum standard of concentration of these heavy metals. So these heavy metals specifically arsenic, cadmium, chromium, copper, etc. So for all these metals, we need to make sure that there is what is called the ceiling concentration, which is basically the maximum concentration of these uh, heavy metals that can be present in the biosolid. So for example, for arsenic, the biosolids cannot have a concentration of more than 75 milligrams per kilogram of the biosolids. In addition, there is what is called a standard for high quality biosolids. In this case, the standard is more stringent. So in the same case as arsenic, for a biosolid to qualify as a high quality biosolid, it cannot have a concentration of uh, arsenic more than 41. And likewise for all the other heavy metals that are listed here. In addition to the pollution concentration standards, what these biosolids need to meet is what is called the pathogen reduction standards. So pathogens are disease causing organisms such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites. As part of these pathogen reduction standards, the biosolids can either be a class A biosolid or a class B biosolid. So what qualifies a biosolid to be class A is that it needs to meet one of these alternatives. So there is alternative one, which is thermally treated biosolids. Uh, and there are six other alternatives. Any one of these alternatives can be met in order for that biosolid to be classified as a class A biosolid. Now, a class A biosolid has uh, no site restrictions for land application. Otherwise, if it is not a class A biosolids, it will have some sort of uh, restrictions in terms of uh, how it is uh, to be used for land application. Uh, one of the things that need to be um, 
elaborated on is there is what is called biosolids treated in PFRP, process to further reduce pathogens. So a biosolids that is stabilized or the wastewater solids that is stabilized using a PFRP process, be any one of the seven processes that are listed here would qualify as a class A biosolids. So a composting, heat drying, heat treatment, uh, thermophilic aerobic digestion, etc. If these are used for stabilizing the solids, the solids that are produced would be class A biosolids. And one additional item is that in order to, uh, to qualify the solids as a class A biosolid is that you'd have to prove that this fecal coliform uh, in that biosolids that is produced is less than a certain uh, MPN per gram in salmonella or other elements such as enteric virus and helminthova. Class B biosolids has certain restrictions when applied to land. So it's, it's a type of a product that is inferior to a class A biosolid. And in order to meet class B, it needs to either have met any of these three alternatives. And uh, one of the alternatives is the biosolids that is treated in what is called the PSRP, which is the uh, process to significantly reduce pathogens. Remember, for class A, it was PFRP, process to further reduce pathogens. And for uh, class B biosolids, it's PSRP, which is the process to significantly reduce pathogens. And one of the elements for, uh, or some of the more familiar elements or stabilization methods which qualify as PSRP is the digestion processes. So aerobic digestion, anaerobic digestion. So if the solids are treated using the aerobic and anaerobic digestion, based on the conditions that are elaborated in this regulation, then it would qualify as a class B biosolids. So the third requirement is the vector attraction reduction standards. So vectors are basically organisms that, such as rodents, uh, rats, and insects that carry disease by carrying and transferring pathogens. So primarily what these vector attraction reduction standards does is make sure that the biosolids that are produced have uh, limited vector attraction capabilities. So vector attraction standards are basically to prevent the transfer and regrowth of uh, pathogens. So to meet the vector reduction standards, there are 12 different options that are available. And this option is typically the most common option that is used 38% reduction in uh, VS concentration. If a uh, solid is subjected or stabilized using anaerobic digestion, you need to make sure that it has a minimum of 38% of volatile solids reduction that happens as part of the digestion process. And when that 38% reduction is met, then it would meet the vector attraction reduction standards. So again, to recap, in order for a solids to qualify for the land application, uh, it needs to meet three specific uh, elements, which is the first one is the pollution concentration, the second one is the pathogen reduction, and the third one is the vector reduction. And finally, one thing needs to be pointed out is that if a biosolids has the three most stringent elements is high quality, if it is class A and has met the vector reduction, then it is classified as exceptional quality standards, 
means basically these exceptional quality or EQ biosolids are virtually unrestricted, means basically widespread utility for land application, means there are very little restrictions in its use. So this is basically the summary of uh, what the biosolids regulations are.